What happened to your ears? Oh, it's a horrible accident. I'm oh. terrible <laughs> so, six months out of the year, they have these cattle birds that come in here and they crap everything up and the water quality is just, and look at the kind of damage they do. Ugh. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. We are traveling around Australia and we are at the Bundenberg Botanic Gardens where Patrick Hanley of Waterscapes of Australia. Hi Patrick. It's a gorgeous day. Rebuilt an old water feature here. So many commercial projects like this with antiquated technology. They use liner with concrete over top of it. You changed a pond into a pond, those, correct? Yeah, for a number of reasons. Cannot wait to see it. Let's check this out. Yes. Katie Johnson from the Bundaberg, plays the supervisor, curator here at the gardens. This place is open to the public, right, year round? Yep. Do people come here and do wedding photos and... Yeah, 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 it's before the revamp, before we had waterscapes in, it was always really popular even for our proms or formal yeah, yeah, yeah. here as well in the year. But there wasn't a lot of photo opportunities. The, the original site was quite skinny. The original site is pretty much what we're standing on. It, it was a path next to <coughs> some ponds. They look sort of vaguely similar, but a lot of concrete in them. But now that we've opened it up, and hopefully with the viewing deck and, and the and the lower level, uh, there's a lot more photo opportunities and a lot more opportunities to get the water incorporated. Previously, we used to have girls in their high heels walking out over into the rocks, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. which was something we didn't yeah, want yeah. to encourage. Where now we've got a lot more op opportunities around. So yeah, it's it's still an area for smaller weddings, but uh -huh. it is just very popular. I'd have to say it's probably our most popular landscape design in here. So over here used to be a big tank, and then down here the tea house looking area used yep. to actually be the pump station right yeah that's correct the pump sat in there pushed the water to the filter system and then from here went over to here the results weren't too flashy yeah. in terms of water quality it was a bit of a constant issue and it was also fighting there was a lot of plant material dropping we had uh, three large points that were just dropping no shortage of um, wow. material into it as well by the time patrick came along we weren't even using that system we bypassed it anyway sure. just because it was a failure so we were literally just making water flow and that was about it so patrick tell me when you came here and you saw the first project how did you sell them rip it out and start over did you have to do drawings there was no drawings there was a bit of a few hoops to run through dealing with um, municipalities that's pretty straightforward i came in and saw it. it was a pool a pool a pool Another big pool, it was about three metres deep, it was like a death trap down there. Oh. It was pretty wild what was sort of being done here. The basis of this design is the fact that this whole area floods. Where does the water come up to? This area does flood. The worst flood would probably be close to ankle deep here at least. Come on! Yeah, oh yeah. my gosh. You guys can't appreciate how high that is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. From the photos here, you don't know, but that's a good 10 feet lower. Yeah, so the whole site oh has, has been underwater. So the idea was to join these water balls together and exactly like you're doing that study. There, there is no real opportunity for viewing from there because it's a built up, it's a tiered feature. The idea is you walk up this path and walk down, you're just taking so one and then two in your yep. vision and then three in your vision and then down there you get four in your vision. And it's just really quite neat. And then it terminates into a pondless waterfall system That's and again because of the flooding. Put a flooding, easy clean, you're not trying to uh, pump out a pond at the bottom there. You can drop some pump down it and flush anything out of it. It's a reservoir. And a whole lot easier to maintain. Oh definitely. So really when you started doing it then you probably came in you came in from here and then just worked your way back out right through the center of this whole stream. Yeah I think we're just working our way down. And then through and then I think we'll just so we can manage the levels of it so we don't yeah. end up with losing because you can get to another point and you get up and say oh crap I've only got that so I wanted to make sure that those top three waterfalls are perfect unless we got to the end this time we have plenty of fall and I want to make this very interesting like this is like a you're coming around the corner here on the road the path along the lake you come in and it's like 
broad, lots of falling water, not just a, sort of a like, a like a fine fall, something that sort of really dances and takes your eye right along. As you're encouraged to move around the pathway, it just keeps getting more and more impressive and, and you discover more. This view is obviously great and I could see some prom and formal event pictures taken here, but it's not that it's any better or any worse than the next great view over there and the next great view over there. Yeah. The rock was local, it was from a quarry. Yeah, so paved like rock. Yeah. 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 There are a few trips out there, check it out. I like working with this rock, it's it's nice to be able to work with things you haven't worked with for a while because it, gives, it's, it makes it a bit more challenging as well and you can see things in the rock and you can start to play a bit more. Cause, so I love the challenges of this one and I love the angle, the angle nature of it as well. It just gave uh, the opportunity for different types of falls and movement of water. There you know, How long has Greg been looking for us? About half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Greg got lost in the botanical garden. They're really good and they're quite tame here in the botanic gardens. They'll eat uh, a lot of people come in and uh, hand feed all the birds and they'll uh, snack on that. So six months out of the year, they have these cattle birds that come in here and they crap everything up and the water quality is just, there's actually a stink to it. You can see the algae, it's just very unhealthy. This is a botanical garden. This is a place that should be absolutely beautiful all the time. It's not their fault that they build a place that there's no other place for these birds to go so they come here, but this is where we come in. We could do a wetland filtration system in here and if it's 10% of the body of water, we can make this water absolutely way improve in quality just with a natural ecosystem approach the way working with mother nature is supposed to because the anaerobic load from these birds is atrocious and look at the kind of damage they do Ugh, are you kidding me so i would love to see this water feature with this water quality get an aquascape ecosystem wetland filtration system in there instead of just trying to put in a giant aerator actually work with mother nature not against her this is more common than not it's challenging for us because this is a concrete pond. This is, you know, not been properly filtered. It's a great, absolutely beautiful design with an island in the middle for the birds, but it's so much easier to work with mother nature than against her. And dealing with crap like this, it's just so frustrating because I know what it could be. It takes some money, but it's always cheaper to do it right the first time. And a wetland filtration system would make this thing absolutely gorgeous and eliminate a major, major problem for them. So they're the uh, Australian Ibis, those ones. And uh, they're not seasonal, they're here most of the year. And uh, they're the other main impact on the water quality here. I'm surprised there's enough food source for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do struggle on and there is a lot of life in there still. So here's some custom-made mechanical weirs for the leaf debris and bird feathers. Oh, the smell is atrocious. So that skims it off and then you come by once a day and empty these out? No, they're, they're only emptied every three weeks, so there's a fair bit fills up in that basket. But yeah, realistically, for the size of these lakes, it's, it's not doing a great deal. Look at that lily pond. That little pagoda there actually had bits of house and uh, copper's logs all up in the roof area. How long ago did it flood? 2013, yeah, the water was that high at that pace. And uh, this bridge is actually still the original bones even though we fully revamped it, but both approaches were washed out. So this bridge was just sat here in no man's land. Wow. All right, guys, so that's a wrap. You know, we're finishing up here in Bundaberg, Australia at the Berg Botanical Garden in the Japanese garden section. I just love walking around this place. It's truly amazing. If you ever get a chance to come out here, check out the brewery, check out the distillery, and don't forget to come to the Botanical Garden. It's just crazy. I think Patrick Hanley, obviously a very, very talented artist. He's got passion and creativity just dripping off of him, right? It's, it's amazing to see the work that he does. This is a very challenging site and he killed it. The thing looks like it's been here for 100 years. It looks absolutely amazing. Make sure you come out here and don't forget to hit like, subscribe, comment, comment, like, subscribe, however you wanna do it, you know the routine and we'll make sure we keep doing this. Then I'll take you go see another one.